today. Um, you know, it's, it's during times of extreme challenge that, uh, that leadership and extraordinary leaders rise to the occasion to meet those challenges. And I think that's what we're going to be seeing here beginning tomorrow and over the next several weeks and possibly months. Um, this is a great opportunity, a great partnership uh, brought to us with Governor DeSantis, the National Guard, the Memorial Health Care System leaders. Uh, it's a, it's a, a unique partnership that we're bringing here uh, to start uh, testing larger number of individuals in the uh, community here in, in South Florida. Uh, we've been challenged like a lot of organizations at, the, at Memorial uh, to identify those patients that we can offer testing to. Uh, but now, in, in the interest of, of really solid public health, we want to be able to bring testing to more and more people. Um, I want to thank a few people who are up here today. Um, some of the physicians that you see uh, from Memorial, if it wasn't for their daily hard work, really in the front lines of this uh, crisis, we wouldn't have the bandwidth at Memorial to partner uh, with the state uh, in this endeavor. So I just want to introduce a few people. Um, we've got Dr. Ari Sorelli. He's our chief of critical care medicine for the healthcare system. We have Denise Reynolds. She is the chief nursing officer at Memorial Hospital West right across the road. Jennifer Goldman is the medical director for Memorial Primary Care Centers and she's going to be integral to operations here in the testing center when it gets up and running. Uh, we have Dr. Paula Eckert. She is the uh, chief of infectious disease medicine for the healthcare system. Paula has been working tirelessly, fielding phone calls, evaluating patients, making key, key clinical decisions on a, on a daily basis. Uh, Rachel Garan is a new member to our team. She is the director of epidemiology and infect, infection control with the, healthcare, uh, uh, with the healthcare system. Again, working very closely with the rest of us on educating the public, educating our staff, training uh, all of us to, to meet these challenges. Uh, I don't think um, that's, that is the memorial group. Um, I want to personally thank uh, Dr. DeSantis. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give him an honorary medical degree. Go, no, no, go. no, no, no. Don't worry, you're safe coming here. I'm not going to have anything to do. Uh, with, uh, thank Governor DeSantis. It's, it's really this vision, uh, forward-thinking leadership and really the ability, the ability to get his team uh, and the guard mobilized quickly to meet this challenge. And I, I really can't thank you enough, sir. Great. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate um, everybody at Memorial for, for all they're doing. Uh, we in the state of Florida, um, the most recent snapshot uh, states uh, up to 390 cases uh, of positive uh, COVID-19. Uh, 98 of those are in Broward County and 86 of those are in Miami-Dade. And so that's almost half of the total cases in Florida are in Broward and Dade. And obviously Broward uh, disproportionately to Dade, you know, has more given the differences in population. So uh, I told Jared, um, as soon as all this stuff with the testing, when we were trying to figure out, are we getting the kits sent or not? I was like, look, we just got to do this ourselves. Uh, so he went out and procured 2,500 test kits on the private market. Uh, those have been distributed uh, across the state to hospitals, private labs, and the state uh, county department uh, of health offices um, but as I found out on this uh, the test kits not enough you need to have enough swabs you need to have enough um, positive negative controls uh, if you run your own lab you got to have enough of the reagent um, and so uh, through his efforts and persistence um, you know we have test kits here for the hospital uh, we have uh, 4,000 collection swabs to start right here. Um, so that's, uh, that's quite a bit of, of samples that we'll, they'll be able to collect here um, and then send off. I think initially, you know, it's important that people um, uh, understand and are able to temper their expectations. We're right now living through the biggest crunch in demand for various metal, medical supplies uh, that we've ever seen in our country's history. I came in, I saw the folks in these N95 masks, 
You know, I'm having dreams about N95 masks because it's like that's all people are talking about. They're talking about these swabs. Uh, everybody really in the world is trying to procure this stuff. Uh, we are getting more in and we're hopeful that we can get even more in at higher levels in the near future. Um, but, but that's just the reality we have. And so what you're going to end up seeing here is initially uh, when you come and get swabbed, they're going to save the samples and then they're going to ship it to a private lab. And the lab's going to test it. It's not going to be done uh, overnight. Uh, there's a national backlog. Uh, they th we think they're going to move to more higher throughput testing, so that potentially could speed it back up. Um, but I just want people to be uh, understand the lay of the land here and the options. I think the great thing about the Memorial Partnership is that they have their own CLIA certified lab. They're working on getting that ready. Um, and so as this uh, program unveil uh, gets going over the next couple days, uh, hopefully what will end up happening is the people that get swabbed here, They'll just take the swabs, bring it right over to their lab at the hospital, run all the samples through. They could do, they'll probably be able to do several hundred a day uh, and then get people the results back quicker. Because I know people get tested and then they're waiting for the results. It's a very frustrating thing. When we first started this, we had to send everything to the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta and it was taking a week to get the test results back. Um, and people were understandably very frustrated about that. So this is a first step, and we just want people to understand expectations. The goal is that if, if this is successful, you can expand um, and then replicate this in other parts uh, of the state. We right now have the federal government has airdropped or delivered uh, a full testing center supplies to Jacksonville and they've done partial for Miami-Dade um, and Orlando. And so once we get those, that'll be the swabs, that'll be everything you need. You know, we're gonna be looked to doing something in Miami-Dade County, um, as well as Duval and Orange Counties. Um, and that obviously will be, will be very helpful. It's important for folks to know that because the resources are still limited, uh, this initially is going to focus on two main groups of people those who are healthcare workers, because if they test positive, then that could potentially sideline a lot of the people that they're working with. And so that's something that we're very, very concerned about. We wanna make sure that they can get tested immediately. And then the other group that is gonna be the focus uh, will be those senior citizens, 65 and over, um, who have uh, symptomatic, uh, who are symptomatic of uh, having coronavirus. So uh, you need to bring your ID um, and the people who will meet the test, of, uh, the, the conditions are if you're 65 or older, if you're symptomatic, uh, if you've been on a, a cruise or affected area, if you're immunocompromised, um, that's the group that's going to be the focus on to start. Uh, so just understand that. I do not want to have someone wait in line for three hours and just to turn, you know, figure out that they're 40 years old and that that's not where we're going on this yet. Now my hope is as we get more supplies, we'll be able to expand the ranges for this drive-through testing. Because I think one of the big issues that we're facing is we have a number of people who are uh, probably very mildly symptomatic. Some hardly have any symptoms. Uh, and what extent are they carrying the virus and then transmitting the virus? And the only way to do that is to really cast a broader net on the testing. So that's the goal of where we'd like to be, you know, as soon as possible. That's why we're ordering half a million swabs. Uh, that's why we're asking HHS to deliver us more swabs. That's why we're doing all this stuff, because we do think it's important. Uh, but tomorrow's opening is not going to be there yet. Uh, and the goal is to get there. Um, now there's a log logistics about the park. Um, uh, this is drive-through only. Um, it's not going to be able to assist pedestrians or bikers uh, to enter. You just have to be in a vehicle and uh, just know that going in. There will likely be a line of people to get in um, and so you'll be winding around this park. They can go through each car. I think what in about eight minutes is what is what you guys said. Yeah. So so about eight minutes. So that's very quick and good. But this you, know, you back that up with all. Then you have multiple lanes. But when you back that up, that is just going to take some time. So people should just be aware with that. Um, 
So, but once you arrive to the testing area, a medic wearing a Tyvek suit will collect a sample with the swab of the nostril. Another service member will be responsible for scribbing the information from the patient's placard to the biohazard bag, and another will be responsible for collecting the sample and placing it in the bag. So that's the process that they're going to go through. Um, they'll refrigerate the sample, and as I said, initially they're going to send it to a vendor uh, because they have the testing capacity. Once the lab here locally is up and running, then they're going to hopefully just be able to send it through there on the same day. Uh, but we're not there yet um, on this. So I'm, uh, I want to thank everyone who's been a part of this. I want to thank the guard. Um, if this is something that, um, that is successful, it not only will help the folks here in Broward County, it could help folks all over the state as this is replicated. Um, people have tried to do this throughout the, the country. It hasn't always worked. Um, and so I think that they've done a good job of, of having a good system and then setting the expectation so people know this is one part of it. Uh, we still got more to go, but we definitely are looking for those groups of individuals um, who are either healthcare workers um, or people um, who are 65 and plus and are symptomatic. Uh, so that's what we, we hope to accomplish. And, um, you know, I'm really uh, happy that, um, that this was stood up. I mean, from the time I asked Jared and the guard to do it, um, you know, they've been able to put this together in relatively short order, and this is not an easy thing to do. So hats off to them for their service. Thank the medical professionals um, here at Memorial for what they're doing. And, um, you know, we're all in this together. Broward County right now in Florida is the epicenter uh, of what we're seeing. Uh, so we need to be here for our uh, friends in Broward and, uh, and, and, and turn the tide on this thing. Once we get more data with all the testing and we can expand that, that's going to help, I think, people make better policy decisions about what we're doing in terms of closing this, closing that. Um, right now, people are kind of flying blind because there haven't been enough tests done. Uh, we're going to try to change that, and I think that that will make uh, the fight against COVID-19 much more effective. I think it'll create, um, I think it'll help people in terms of public health, but I also think it'll help the broader society get back on its feet um, as, we, as we defeat this and move past. I want to let Jared say a few things um, as our emergency management director, uh, since he was really instrumental in getting this going. Uh, Governor, thank you. Uh, it's surreal to be back uh, in my home county setting up a testing facility for a virus, but that's where we find ourselves. Uh, through the governor's direction, uh, we have been working day and night at the EOC at a level one, trying to acquire uh, as many of the commodities that we have all been reading about uh, and making ourselves experts on N95 masks and the like. So we have requested with the federal government for ventilators and hospital beds and coveralls and gowns and gloves, uh, collection swabs. Uh, but we are also going out on the private market to try to acquire all of those different things on our own. Uh, and so uh, we currently uh, have procured 1,500 uh, ventilators. We are waiting for deliveries. We're getting deliveries every single solitary week on the ventilators. Uh, we have uh, four 250-person uh, mobile field hospitals. One of them actually is being set up right here in Broward County right now, uh, and that'll be open uh, if it becomes necessary. One other one is being moved near the villages, and the other two are pre-positioned in Orlando, uh, waiting for possible deployment. We're uh, examining all sorts of different ways to expand bed capacity here uh, in the state. And so uh, I know the, the, the president, the vice president, we're talking about uh, you know, surgical centers uh, and using their capacity since they have ventilators. Uh, but we are also looking uh, at using our ports potentially uh, at bringing in certain sort of ships to expand bed capacity uh, if that uh, became, becomes necessary. So there, there is no option uh, that is off the table. A way emergency management works is you're not just thinking about today, you're thinking about two weeks from now, 30, 30 days from now, 45 uh, days from now. And so uh, we're going to work really hard to make sure that we can get these other testing sites up uh, and running. Uh, I, I want to talk to younger people who are out there uh, who even, you know, whether things are open or closed, uh, you don't have to go out. You can be a hero to the person next to you by social distancing. You don't know if they have an underlying medical condition. Stay away from seniors, social distance. You can do those things. This virus doesn't care who you are. It doesn't care if you're rich, you're poor, your color, your nationality, your religion, your political affiliation. 
but we do know that social distancing works. And so we ask that you do that. We ask uh, that you be a hero. There will be another spring break when this is over. The beach will be there. Uh, but it is important to do that. Call your neighbors. If you know you have seniors that live down the block from you, call them. See how they're feeling. See if they need supplies. Uh, these are things that you can do as the younger generation to help older people that came before you. Uh, and so, you know, we ask that, you know, now is the time for everyone to help themselves, uh, help each other. Uh, I want to thank Governor DeSantis uh, for the leadership uh, that he's providing uh, to the state because we're all, we're all in this together. Governor, thank you. So we um, uh, will be making um, another announcement in the morning. Uh, we've been consulting with the uh, uh, local folks here in Broward, um, as well as in Palm Beach County. Um, if you look at that uh, most recent guidance that was put out uh, by the President's Task Force on Monday, um, it had a number of things in terms of social distancing, some of these other uh, recommendations. Uh, if you look at the very bottom in the very fine print, it said that um, there were certain actions that communities should take uh, when there's community spread. And so uh, the county has been working with us on identifying kind of those uh, actions in terms of additional closures, um, you know, like gyms and things like that. Uh, so we're going to be working on that, that order tonight, but I've agreed uh, to, to do it for Broward and Palm Beach counties. And uh, it'll be similar to, uh, I think, what's been done in, in Miami-Dade County. Um, and again, that's based off the recommend, well, the recommendations of the, the local officials, but also the CDC recommendations uh, that when you do have community spread, uh, then there's additional uh, items that should be on uh, the list. So that will apply. Uh, Dade has already done it. It will apply to Broward and Palm Beach. Um, and if you look at the cases in Florida, um, it's a clear majority of cases are in those three counties. Um, we have many counties that still don't have a single case, um, and we have some, even some large counties, uh, that are still in single digits. Now, that may change as the testing expands, uh, but nevertheless, I think Southeast Florida um, is, is the epicenter of what we're fighting in Florida, and so we want to work constructively with the local folks, and um, if that's something that's going to be beneficial and the CDC recommends it, uh, then we're happy to, uh, to help with that. And with that, I'll take a question or two, but I got to get back and run. Governor, you said that it takes about a week to get results. Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, so the Jackson, so what it is is we provide the personnel, but they will provide, theoretically, I hope, I hope it's true, all the stuff you need. So the swabs, um, the other, the PPE that people wear. Um, uh, to be able to, to run these sites. Uh, Jared is also working with some private vendors who um, may also be able to fill the void because I think it's great to have Miami Center, uh, 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 Jacksonville, Orlando, uh, but I'd like to see a lot more pop up around the state. Now we do have some private ones that have popped up. Some have been successful, some not as successful, um, but I think having this would be good. I'm willing to put more National Guard folks um, into the fight um, for those things. And then Jared has also procured um, a number of medical personnel, nurses and the like, um, a contract for their services. So we'll be able to bring in additional healthcare professionals as well uh, to help staff that. Um, and I think if the private lab capacity really goes up exponentially like we think is going to happen or we're told is going to happen at the end of this week into the beginning of next and as more of the Florida based labs are able to process even if they can only do a hundred samples a day we got uh, probably 50 of them that if they're able to do that 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 adds your numbers then you're in a situation where you're really testing enough to have a good idea exactly how this virus is reacting in the state of Florida Well, so I spoke with uh, I spoke with the chairman of the tribe this morning, um, and as you know, they're sovereign. You know, they they don't have to follow uh, what the state of Florida uh, decrees, um, but they did uh, implement uh, my directions uh, regarding bars and restaurants um, voluntarily, um, and they've in, they've implemented um, a number of far-reaching social distancing measures for some of their other operations. Um, they conveyed to me that uh, the safety of their workforce is paramount to them 
and that they will only operate if they can do so safely. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, I take them at their word on that. But, but obviously, you know, we want, uh, we want folks to, to, to heed the call with the social distancing. You know, I think that's one of the, one of the most important things. And, um, you know, this is a virus that, that is, uh, it is invisible, it's contagious. But, you know, if you're 10 feet away from somebody, um, you know, you, and you're protecting yourself, you're going to be fine. If you get in a group of people, um, that are close by, then it becomes much more difficult uh, to be able uh, to guard against it. And so that's a lot of that is voluntary guidance and decisions that some of these decisions by the governments can kind of inform. But ultimately, I think it's up to people to make those key decisions uh, so that a couple weeks from now, we can say that this thing hasn't taken off like we feared. Um, and then we can really, I think, uh, hopefully get things uh, going in a better direction in terms of the economy. I will, let me just say this, too, about um, uh, the economy. We were in a situation in this state, in fact, the unemployment numbers that hit my desk on Monday, now they didn't reflect the fallout from the previous week with the virus, but the unemployment numbers in Florida were 2.8%. Uh, the state was rocking and rolling. We had a lot of people doing very well, a lot of people wanting to come down here, partially because it's a great state, but partially because there, were, there was economic opportunity. Uh, this virus has been really an external shock on the economy. There's going to be a lot of our friends and neighbors who, through no fault of their own, um, maybe they get furloughed, maybe they get they get completely let go, um, and they're going to need um, some assistance, particularly some of our lower wage workers who work paycheck to paycheck. Uh, so what I'm doing, one, we're going to turn on and seek whatever types of financial assistance we can uh, for displaced workers, uh, and we are also turning on as much uh, aid to small businesses as possible. You know, some of these small businesses were doing well, but if you just totally take everything away from them, um, they don't have unlimited cash on hand. And so that crunch happens very quickly. And I think it's a shame if we have our friends and neighbors go out of business through no fault of their own. So if we can provide some additional liquidity through some of our programs, some of the federal programs, you know, that could make a huge difference and that could allow us to bounce back quicker economically. Jared and I are going to be seeking uh, the, un the disaster unemployment assistance through FEMA, uh, which, is, um, which is beneficial. Uh, and then I've instructed my folks at the Department of Economic Opportunity uh, to uh, cut through all the red tape, waive any, any um, you know, restrictions about you got to apply for this many jobs. Normally those are good because you want people to seek work first, but in this case with the shock to the system, you know, we want to be there and be helpful um, you know, to those individuals. And so um, I've told them to, to do all they can um, in that respect. And, and that's going to be important because if we're able to slow the virus's spread um, here in Florida, and we can minimize some of the economic harm uh, in the meantime, it will make us, it make it easier for us to roar back. I think the fundamentals were great for this state, um, and I think they can still be, uh, but we can't have people just totally thrown out with nowhere to go. And so that's going to be a big, uh, big concern of mine. Um, I want to thank the Congress, Senator Rubio and some of his colleagues uh, for working hard on, on a relief uh, package. And I also want to thank a lot of our private businesses here who are putting in money uh, for different types of community endeavors you know, to help some of the folks um, who are going to be dislocated or have been dislocated by this. You know, we, because of our uh, status as a place where people would go to Disney or go to all these places, you know, a lot of that is, is, is closed now. And so it's going to really, really hit a lot of folks uh, very hard. And um, you know, we've got to keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Governor. Um, I'll let Jared ask the second. Um, so yes, if you take, I mean, let me, you guys can correct me, but if you, if you take the swabs accurately and there's no contamination, that would be 4,000 different tests, correct? Yes. Um, it's interesting, when they used to do it, they would make you run the different samples, except now you can combine them in one. I know more about this testing in the last three, four weeks than I ever thought I would ever know. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's the goal. We want to get uh, more more swabs down here. Um, if we could get even half of what we've ordered uh, delivered to Florida, 
we really could rock and roll because we could have uh, tens of thousands in South Florida and we could do 10,000 in some of these others, work through that, put more in the, into the kitty and, uh, and really help us, I think, get a better sense of, of what's going on here. So, um, but I, here's one thing I think people should know, and I've talked to Jared about it. Once all this started happening, we declared an emergency pretty early. Jared immediately went out and started to buy all this stuff or at least order it. Um, but what happened was you know, there, are, there are people out there that are like venture capitalists who are just buying this up and then they turn it around and sell it uh, for a profit on the market. Um, that just has put an additional crunch onto the things uh, that, that are out there. Um, and so I think you're in a situation where we were told out of the 500,000 that we were going to get 250,000 swabs this week. And I think they've given us like four or 5,000 of the swabs. And so we're waiting for more. HHS is, we think, is sending swabs. Um, they don't really we have good ways to track it, but Jared may end up getting 5,000 more swabs dropped on his doorstep over the next day or two. Um, so that's going to be an ongoing thing. We anticipate that we will at least get them in dribs and drabs, but if we could get a real big shipment in, that would really help us be able to not only turn it up here in Broward, we could do Dade, Palm Beach County, uh, but then get some of these other areas around the state. And I think that um, what we ideally would like to do if we could really have the supplies that you need is start to do some sentinel screening surveillance type testing like they do with the flu where they're seeing how prevalent it is in the population if we could do that with some of the younger folks who are under 50 uh, who tip who tend not to get hospitalized on this uh, that will give us a better sense of who actually is out there carrying this um, because we don't really, I think, have a good sense of that right now. Uh, but that is definitely information we need, and that would very much inform how you're going about doing all these things. I can take one more, and then i got to get back on the road. Governor, you said you work with local municipalities and counties as far as what beaches to shut down. Why not just shut down all the beaches? Because we're seeing these spring breakers go into other counties that don't have well, any Well, not under my order. So we did an order, no gatherings on beaches. 10 or more so what you've seen now is uh, a lot of the sheriff's departments have instituted protocols i had the brevard sheriff he had his deputies on atvs they had a boat going down uh, the coast and they're telling people you got to disperse coco beach major spring break destination went down 70 percent since my order and so I, I think that's a more prudent approach to do social distancing i just spoke to the u.s surgeon general about it and here's the thing they want you to social distance of course but they actually encourage people to get fresh air they just don't want you congregating in big groups and so if you have a floridian um, that you know goes walks their dogs like a married couple on the beach um, as long as you're not within six feet of each other they view that and, and you know that's a healthy thing um, and so um, I think it's important to allow that if the local communities want to do it um, to be to be able to do it uh, we're also in a situation where we have counties who have no community spread uh, we have some counties that don't have a single positive test yet and so I don't want to be in a situation where we're diverting people unwittingly into activities that are going to be more dangerous for passing the virus but I've stood by every local community, the Miami Beach, Fort Lauderdale, we're backing them. Mayor Jimenez just did it. That, that's, that's great if that's good for them. But I also think we're going to be in a situation where um, if people are able to go out and be spaced out, so these are not spring break. These are our neighbors who may need to go out there, clear their head, because a lot of people are on edge right now. And this is going to be obviously a physical challenge with the virus, but I think it's really weighing on a lot of people. And um, I just the, I want the localities to have an outlet available um, if they think that that makes sense. But since I issued my my directive, anybody who's who's put that in place, spring break's done. Uh, any uh, place to go for bars and all this, done. They don't have a place to go. But I would also say what we're finding is when we did the universities and we, we, uh, we extended uh, their time away for two weeks, they, we were thinking, you know, don't come back yet. Instead, they all went back and they were drinking in the bars every night. So then we shut the bars down. Well, guess what they did then? 
they went to the fraternity houses and doing that. And so there's only there's certain things we can do. But I think, as Jared said, you know, some of the folks just need to be responsible um, and heed the advice that people are doing. Um, but that's part of the thing. So with the order tomorrow, Palm Beach and Broward had asked have asked that the beaches be included in that. So we're going to do it. Um, the rest are required to do social distancing. And I can tell you that has been effective where it has been implemented. So we're going to ask the Sheriff of Brevard to put out the best practices for the communities on that. And then this way they can figure out and monitor how things are going and they can make decisions if they want to be more stringent. Of course you can be more stringent. Um, but I think uh, you know, when people put out some of these pictures that were you know, at the beginning of the weekend when CDC's guidance said 250 people is fine, time changed radically in 72 hours. And so we've responded. A lot of local communities have responded. Um, and so I think that that, that, that is, um, that that's a prudent approach. And it also recognizes that our state is vast. It's very diverse. I mean, I can go from Pensacola to St. Louis and about the same time I could drive from Pensacola to Miami. I mean, that's just the reality of what we're dealing with here. But we will absolutely work with the locals um, to, uh, to effectuate policy that they think makes sense. And we're going to do that uh, tomorrow uh, when we issue the order uh, with the Broward and Palm Beach communities. And we're happy to work with them. Uh, and what I, as part of that order, I think what I want to do is also delegate uh, the local uh, administrators the authority to take that as circumstances change uh, because I think this is a very dynamic situation uh, I think that we get new information every day this testing could could give us new vital information that we need and I think they want to have the freedom to be able you know to have the policies in place uh, that are going to make the most sense but you know, you're going to see some fatigue on this mitigation you know in 10 days two weeks I mean you can mark mark my words on that uh, so I think our policy has tried to be, you know, let's do the social distancing um, in ways that will effectively uh, halt the spread of the virus, but are also sustainable if this ends up going, you know, many, week, many weeks and many months. I hope it doesn't, but I think we've got to prepare for that. Thanks, everybody.